1987, 20th Century Fox released Predator, a movie which was essentially just another action vehicle for Arnie to flex and smoke his way through. This movie, however, ended up becoming a cult classic thanks to its superb casting, interesting concept, excellent filmmaking, and highly quotable dialogue. Predator tells the story of an expert military team sent into a conflict zone to show a high-tech alien hunter how tough and muscular they are. Okay, so that's not quite the plot, but it's not far off. And it also ties in nicely with the subject of this video. Predator is a movie which is so heavily soaked in hyper-masculinity that it's even been mocked by It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Dudes' physiques. Dennis, and whether and they can body mass alone. That's what I was trying to avoid. Conversation about body mass, okay? We've had that conversation five times a day for the last month. Because we keep watching Predator and all you talk about is Weathers and, 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 and Jesse the Body Ventura and how many pounds they can pass It's on. important. Here's my theory. The Predator has a very dark sense of humor. And after watching these hulking masculine cliches, he uses their bravado against them to stalk them and inflict ironic deaths upon them. Predator tells the story of a group of special forces soldiers who are dispatched into the jungle to search for hostages kidnapped by some local banditos. Unfortunately for them, they stumble into the hunting ground of a high-tech alien safari hunter who slowly and methodically picks them off one at a time. Not content with simply killing an elite group of killing machines, he decides to kill them all in a way which mocks the sweaty bravado that they consistently project, with the exception of Billy and Dutch. But we'll come back to them later. Hawkins is the first of the crew to get taken out by the Predator. He also has the weakest macho facade. Throughout his short time on screen, his attempts at fitting in with his much more traditionally masculine co-workers stem mostly from attempting to tell vulgar jokes about his girlfriend's hoo-ha. my girlfriend, I said, you know, I'd like a little pussy. She said, me too, mine's as big as a house. Hawkins' death is actually twofold ironic. After chasing the woman through the jungle in a scene which looks to an external observer, a little bit like a rape, the predator grabs Hawkins, strips him bare, penetrates him with his nifty wrist blade and hangs him from a tree. Remember what that last joke was? To my girlfriend, I said, you know, I'd like a little pussy. She said, me too, I just big as a house. And now, he kind of looks like a giant, gruesome, Blaine is the hyper macho, muscle bound minigun wielder, played by Jesse the Body Ventura. He's the type of masculine that makes sure everyone in the room knows just how masculine he really is. This stuff will make you a goddamn sexual tyrannosaurus, just like me. He's such a macho tough guy that after taking a shot in the arm during the camp raid, he spouts possibly the coolest and toughest sounding line of all time. Hit. You're hit! You're bleeding, man! I ain't got time to bleed. After being separated and led into a corner of the jungle alone, Predator blasts Blaine with one of the coolest weapons in cinema history, punching a hole right through his chest proving that despite his claims, Blaine does have time to bleed. This time. At least at first, because as if to mock Blaine even further, after the initial gush, No powder burns, no shrapnel, the wounds all fused, cauterized. The Predator makes Blaine's boast come true. Mac is presented as a bit of an unhinged character throughout the movie, spending most of his time ritualistically shaving with a disposable razor and generally acting a bit weird. He always seems a bit like he's right on the edge of losing it. This act of coming across as a little psychotic is his bravado. His method of puffing out his chest and scaring away the other birds. When Dylan makes the mistake of not being a grunt. Mike corners Dylan and offers some advice. One more time, I'll bleed you real quiet. Leave you here. After Predator teaches Blaine how to bleed, Mike reminisces about the good old days while projecting some more of his macho facade. I'm gonna cut your name and... First of all, let's go back to the threat of cutting Blaine's name right into Predator's skin. While nobody leaves a mark, the closest we get is this. Predator could kill Mac far quicker than this, but chooses to let Mac see his mark on Mac's skin. Was he listening during the camp raid the previous night? Then there's his actual death. Remember Mac's other demonstration of masculine strength? I'll bleed you 
real quiet, leave you here. If there is any doubt that the Predator was mocking Mac with his mock, then there's definitely none in how he kills Mac. No screams, no loud noises. Pancho is quiet most of the time, being slim and wiry, he doesn't flex his masculinity with his muscles like the others. Pancho lets his skill do the talking. His weapon of choice is a six-shooter grenade launcher, a weapon not really renowned for its accuracy or even a need for accuracy. While everyone else is firing assault rifles during the camp raid, Poncho does some flexing of his own, firing a few perfectly aimed shots from his grenade launcher, sending gorilla after gorilla flying through the air. After Blaine tells him he ain't got time to bleed, Poncho replies by saying, Okay. You got time to duck? Pretty badass. After the team's attempt to trap Predator fails, an errant plasma caster shot hits a huge branch and basically turns it into a swinging log trap, which flies towards the group. Remember his badass line from earlier? You got time to duck? Well, everyone ducks under this log apart from Poncho as it sends him poetically through the air thanks to a perfectly timed shot, just like the gorillas from his shots earlier. But this isn't actually what kills Poncho just the ironic humiliation before his final curtain call. While Poncho liked to demonstrate his perfect marksmanship with the grenade launcher, Predator shows him what a perfect marksmanship really is, by making him the only person to die by long distance headshot. Dylan is an old friend of Dutch's and the only member of the team who needs to prove himself to the others. His initial attempt to prove he's not just a desk jockey is during his introduction when he foolishly attempts to arm wrestle Mr. Olympia and loses. This ends up mattering later in the film. He spends the entire movie pretending to be innocent of the fact that he tricked the team into the mission and also trying to prove that he's still a soldier. After following Mac into the jungle, who is about to get his own ironic death, Dylan finally catches up to the alien and for the first time in the movie, uses his combat instincts to detect and attack the Predator. Just like at the start of the movie though, when he tries to assert his masculinity, his right arm pays the price, right before Predator makes Dylan realise he should probably have stayed behind the desk. Billy and Dutch are the two exceptions to this group, so let's start with Billy. Right from the very beginning, Billy has no bravado. He treats the jungle and combat zone with respect. He acknowledges his fear and limitations and he doesn't try to prove he's tougher than anyone else. Quite the opposite in fact, he even demonstrates his fear right in front of a group which thrives on pretending they're afraid of nothing. I'm scared, Pancho. Respectful and honest Billy is the only one of the group who is given the dignity of having his last scene look somewhat heroic and also getting an off-screen death which doesn't mock him for his behaviour. Dutch is the only member of the group who doesn't try to outwardly project a masculine bravado, preferring instead to mostly let his actions do the talking. I'd go as far as to say that while everyone else was attempting to be masculine, Dutch was actually being masculine. Like Billy, he also prefers to offer his opponents a little respect and doesn't automatically presume to be superior. He is also the only member of the team who lives. When realising that he's outmatched by the Predator, Dutch does what every other team member refused to do, including Billy. He runs. While the rest of the team would consider this the act of a pussy, Dutch is less concerned with his image and more concerned with staying alive and regrouping, and it turns out to be the best decision of his life. This leads to him discovering the Predator's weakness, and also how to fight back. Well, it turns out the Predator himself was also projecting a bit of macho bravado in the form of his high-tech weaponry. He consistently mocks and taunts the team throughout the movie, using his position of superior technological strength to stay hidden. When Arnie figures out how to disable the technology suddenly, the sides are a bit more even, and Predator is put into a position to test his masculinity, after he's goaded a bit by Dutch into ditching his high-tech weapons and fighting one-on-one. -on -one. This proves to be his undoing, as it turns out that without his weapons, the Predator is just as ineffective as the team he's terminated. While Predator turned each soldier's masculine bravado against them, to hit them all with ironic deaths, it's Orne who reveals Predator's bravado, and uses it against him. 
Arnie utilizes much more primitive versions of the exact same technology to take the Predator down. Mud for invisibility, arrows instead of a plasma caster, and fire to hide his heat signal. Frustrated by Arnie's low-tech defense, the Predator decides to prove his superiority over his human prey by fighting hand-to-hand, -hand, only to ironically find that all his technology, training and physical superiority were undone by a trap so basic that even small children could avoid it. So while the Predator tests everyone's macho facade, he ultimately fails when Dutch gives him the same test.